Problem 2. Summation n is equal to 1 to infinity of the alternating series negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n minus n. It's one of the more difficult tests to use because it requires a little bit more work than the others. So part A, it's an alternating series. We see the alternator negative 1 to the n plus 1. And we have three conditions to check for convergence. So condition one is you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the function without its alternator, that is 1 over 2n minus 1, you get an answer of 0, which is an affirmative a yes, which means that this series might be going on to convergence. Moving on to conditions 2 and 3, second condition is pretty easy to do. You look at 1 over 2n minus 1, the function involved here, and say, is this greater than 0? And it is, as long as you go bigger than the number 4. So it doesn't have to be true for every single n. It just has to be true for some n and larger n's. So condition 3 is the difficult one. You have to show that your function is decreasing. That is, that the n plus 1 term, which follows the n term, is actually smaller than the pr previous one. The other way of doing this is you check the derivative, and if the derivative is negative, less than zero, that means the function is decreasing, which means it also has to be going downhill. Showing how to do this by comparing the n plus 1 term to the nth term, you're going to replace every n with an n plus 1. So the original problem, which is 1 over 2n minus n, you replace that n plus 1 into the n, and you get 1 over 2 be careful, you have the quantity of n plus 1 minus 9. And we're asking, is that less than 1 over 2n minus 9? So you simplify that by distributing the 2 to get 1 over 2n plus 2 minus 9. And we're saying, is that smaller than 1 over 2n minus 9? Simplifying, you get 1 over 2n minus 7 is less than 1 over 2n minus 9. And then you cross-cancel to get a statement that says 2n minus 9 less than 2n minus 7. And is that true? Well, one more step. If you subtract 2n from both sides, you get a statement that's saying that negative 9 is less than negative 7, and everybody can agree that that's a true statement. Now, here's the other way of checking condition 3, finding if the derivative is less than 0. So you have this function, f of n is equal to 1 over 2n minus 9, and we find its derivative. So it's a quotient rule. So on the bottom, you have a 2n minus 9 quantity squared. On the top, you have a 2n minus 9 times the derivative of the top, which is just 0, minus 1 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2, you get an answer for the derivative of negative 2 over 2n minus 9 quantity squared. And we take a look at it and say, well, negative 2 is always negative 2. And if we put any value of n into 2n minus 9 quantity squared, you're always going to get a positive. So that means negative 2 over positive is always negative, and therefore the derivative is less than zero, and this function has to be decreasing. You only have to check that condition three one way, either showing that the n plus one is smaller than the nth term, or that the derivative is decreasing. We showed both, so part c, which is the conclusion for this series, is the summation n is equal to one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one over two n minus nine converges to an approximate value of 1.5038.